Today, I'm gonna teach you guys how you can create this dope 3D title text effect using After Effects and Element 3D. Let's go. All right guys, so now that we are inside of After Effects, we have our clip loaded up. The first thing that we're gonna do is we have to get Element 3D, okay? So how do you get Element 3D? You go to their website and oh you buy God, it. Bro. Oh, hell no. It's 200 bucks to me, it's worth it. And think about it, you're a video editor, huh. you're doing commission-based work, and if you buy something that's going to allow you to keep making money, then I see it as a worthwhile investment. So that's how I personally look at it. So once you've downloaded Element 3D, let's get right into this effect. First, go to Layer, Create New Solid. And now this can be whatever, you can just call this uh, 3D. Hit OK and boom, there you go. Now we're gonna go to our effects and we're gonna search for Element 3D plugin and we're gonna drag and apply this to our 3D layer solid layer. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a text layer. Now this is gonna be the actual 3D text. So I'm gonna write 3D text. Now this can be whatever font you choose. Let's go ahead and choose a nice font. Now once we have our font selected right here, what we're gonna do is we are gonna go ahead and click on our solid 3D layer with the Element 3D plugin applied. We're gonna go to our Element 3D solid layer. We're gonna hit the drop down on our custom layers we're gonna hit the drop down on custom text and mask and now for path layer one I want you to select none and change that to 3d text or whatever text layer uh, you have named right there it should be number two for you depending on the order that you created your text and one last thing before we go into our scene setup is we're gonna hit the drop down on custom texture maps and for layer one we are going to select our video clip layer right here now this is very important so that we get proper correct lighting when we go into our scene setup now once we have all those settings applied let's go ahead and click scene setup our top left hand corner and now you're taken into the element 3d workspace now if you're new to element 3d don't worry this is gonna be a completely beginner friendly tutorial it's actually very very simple to use and operate first up we gotta get our text in. How do we do that? We just hit the extrude button right here next to the 3D text icon. And just like that, we have some nice 3D text. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna texture this. So I'm gonna hit the drop down on the bevel, bevel one. Now what we're gonna do for this one is we are gonna create a nice brushed steel metal effect. Now you have to get something that are called bump maps. Now bump maps are completely free. You can download them online on the internet for free. So I'm just gonna go to Google and search for a brushed steel metal normal map and go to images and you'll see a bunch of weird looking images like this they're all like purple and they have this like kind of texture applied so you can choose whichever one you like and download it and this will basically serve as the lighting conditions for our texture just go ahead and download a steel texture that you like now that you've selected your first material we're going to create this into a steel texture but before we do that we actually need to create two more bevel layers so that we have a cool bevel effect. So to do that, we're gonna go ahead and select our text model extrusion model. We're gonna go over here to our extrusion tab right here and we're gonna change the bevel copies from one to three. And just like that, boom, we have three more bevel copies, okay? We're gonna go to our very bottom third most layer and we are going to increase that extrusion a lot. So select the third bevel layer. I'm gonna increase the bevel size a little bit and then I'm just going to actually keep the, uh, the extrusion just like that. But let's go ahead and expand edges a little bit as well up to 0.27 and then the bevel size is 1.5. Then next is my bevel two model. I'm just gonna go ahead and extrude this just a little bit. So now you can see we have some nice like three 3D text going on right here within our 3D text. And I might as well go ahead and expand that just a little bit as well. And last but not least, our third layer, which is bevel layer one, and I'm gonna extrude this the most. I'm actually gonna go ahead and increase the bevel curve so that it's a little bit sharp right here on the edges. So I'm gonna go back to my third layer and I'm just gonna increase that size, the bevel size a little bit more, a little bit thicker and boom, just like that, there we go. Now we have some nice looking 3D text. Let's go ahead and texture that. So on my first most bevel layer, bevel one, which should be your topmost layer and the most extruded layer, this is gonna be our steel metal effect. I'm gonna go over here to this reflectivity button right here and I'm just going to increase that reflectivity a bunch up to 100%. I'm gonna scroll up actually to the basic settings and decrease the glossiness a little bit to around like 70% so that it's not like super, super shiny, but it's like, it's definitely metallic. And now, Time for that bump normal map that we downloaded on Google. We're gonna go up to our textures panel. We're going to select this normal bump selection area and we're gonna hit none set. And now we're going to load our texture. Click load from file and go to wherever you stored that file. Uh, for me, it was in screenshots and here we go. 
I have this nice brushed steel bump map. I'm just gonna go ahead and hit open. So now that we have that texture in, you can see it automatically transformed our text to look like this steel effect. Now there's a couple things we wanna do before we just leave it as is. As you can tell, this is kind of a smaller image. So we have some low quality looking brushed metal edges. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna increase that UV repeat so that the chiseled edges become very, very, very small. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and decrease the UV width repeat so that the uh, edges become a lot wider than they are. Hit okay. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna decrease the bump map to around like 20% so that it's not too hard, but we can definitely see we have some nice like brushed metal edges. Now let's go ahead and set our environments for all of our materials. So I'm gonna hit uh, the environment tab. I'm going to hit the drop down and you should see your custom layer set because we selected the video clip layer in the beginning. So once I select that, boom, there we go. We have our actual video clip applied and it's perfectly set to the lighting. And now these two back layers are very simple. I'm actually just gonna set this to like a black color. So I'm gonna select this uh, material icon, set the fuse color to black. And let's go to basic settings and turn down the glossiness as well to 35%. Now I'm just gonna right click that, copy the material and then paste it to my other material right here. Boom, there we go. And now we have two nice black edges backgrounds that just make the 3D text pop a lot more. Now hit okay and boom. There we go, we have our 3D text applied into our main scene. We can just go ahead and turn off the visibility of the actual original text layer. Everything will stay the same. Now it's time to animate it, give it some cool looking effect. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the drop down on group one, hit the drop down on particle replicator, and then also hit the drop down on particle look. And one last time, I'm so sorry, so many drop downs, hit the drop down on multi object and enable multi object. Okay, so there we go. Now we're good. We hit all the drop downs. It's time to actually add some animation to this. Go to the very end of like my clip and I'm going to scroll all the way down to the rotation random multi and I'm just going to increase that just a very tad bit so that like the letters are kind of a little bit angled. I'm gonna go all the way to the end of my clip right here and then I'm gonna set a keyframe at the random multi rotation so that we have some animation throughout our entire effect. And then I'm gonna go to the very, very beginning and I'm just going to decrease that rotation random multi a crap ton so that the letters are all in these like weird positions. And now you can see if we play that out, we have this weird trippy like rotating letters effect. So now let's go ahead and keyframe this so that it's a lot smoother. Now, by the way, if you get this like glitching looking effect in the back, that's because we have two layers that are clipping each other. So what you can do to fix that is go back to your scene setup, select your bottom most bevel two layer, and then you can just go to the bevel layer and select the Z offset and just uh, decrease that so that the layer is actually behind our, our silver metallic layer. Now we go back to our scene and Boom, there we go. Now all the letters are fixed. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the rotation random multi keyframe at the very beginning, right click it, keyframe assistant and easy ease out. Then I'm gonna do the same thing for the back keyframe, except instead of easy ease out, I'm gonna right click it and turn it into keyframe easy ease in. So that way we have this like smoother animation effect to make this even more smoother and just like really nice looking, I'm gonna hit the graph editor and now I'm gonna select this keyframe right here, anchor, and just make this effect like start really fast in the beginning and then smooth out over time. So I'm gonna drag the front anchor keyframe all the way up so that we have this nice like, curve effect right here. And now if we play this out, boom, there's a lot of animation in the beginning and then it kind of just slows down towards the end. I'm gonna click out of our graph editor and I'm actually gonna do the same thing for the scale as well. So I'm just gonna go scroll all the way up over here to the very top of our group one drop down. And for our particle size, I'm just gonna go ahead and go to the middle of our clip right here, right when the letters like come into shape, I'm gonna hit a keyframe at the particle size, like just how they are. Actually, let's zoom out. Let's scale it up just it's a little bit bigger. Then I'm gonna go to the very beginning and decrease the particle size to zero. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the graph editor once again and let's go ahead and keyframe it. I'm gonna use some keyframe icons right here to turn my linear keyframes into Bezier keyframes and create a similar curve pattern just like we did for the rotation. Of just mess around with your keyframes and once you play that out, we have this nice like smoother pop out animation effect 
with some 3D letters. It's looking really sick. Now that we have our animation effect, I'm gonna go to my effects panel and I'm gonna search for the light rays effect right here, the CC light rays, and I'm gonna apply this to my element 3D layer right here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over here to where the text pops in. I'm gonna select the center and I'm just gonna select that T right there in the very middle and boom, there we go. Now we have some nice like light rays. You can go ahead and mess around with some of these settings. I'm gonna decrease that warp softness down to five and then let's increase the intensity, uh, actually decrease the intensity to around like 75. And now we have this nice like little light ray effect going on with the uh, letters. I'm just gonna go ahead and reposition that center so that it stays nice and centered on that T right there. And if you need to adjust it, you can of course use the keyframe. I'm also gonna create like a cool shine effect. So to do this, I'm gonna create a new layer. I'm going to create an adjustment layer right here. And then I'm going to go to my effects and presets and search for Lumetri color. Let's apply that to our adjustment layer. Hit the drop down on basic color correction and just basically increase the exposure a bunch. Now let's create a very, very simple rough mask in like the shape of like a tilted rectangle-ish. And then I'm just gonna go ahead, hit the drop down on the mask and increase that feather opacity like a crap ton so it feels nice and natural. Now I'm gonna create an animation for that mask path right here, at the middle of the clip when the text finally comes into full size. And let's just move this mask path across the entire text. So I'm just gonna select all the keyframes and just move it across. And you can see we have this nice like shine effect over all our letters and drag it all the way to the end. Now if we play that out, boom, we have this nice like letter shining animation effect. And how to make sure that this light only applies to our text. What we're gonna do is we're actually just gonna go ahead and select our 3D layer. We're gonna hit Command D to duplicate it. And then I'm just going to grab this track matte pick whip tool and select the topmost 3D layer and boom, there we go. Now we have this like 3D shine effect that only applies to our 3D text layer and we have some light rays. I'm actually going to go ahead and turn down the light ray intensity. It's pretty hard on effect. And now finally for some finishing touches, I'm just going to go ahead and turn on the motion blur for both of my 3D layers so that we have some nice motion blur when the text pops in. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and search for a Gaussian blur effect and I'm going to apply this to my background video layer so that when the text comes into full scale, we're just going to have the background of the video just kind of blur out so like the camera is focusing on this 3D text. So I just dragged the Gaussian blur to my bottom 3D layer, hit the drop down so you can see some of these keyframes right here. And I'm just creating a keyframe at the blurriness at the very beginning, going a couple frames after and just increasing that blurriness a bunch, like 40%. Let's go ahead and mess around with those keyframes. Like I always say, don't copy this tutorial down to the nitty gritty details, mess around with it, make this effect your own. I'd even recommend adding some camera shakes, which by the way, we just dropped our ultimate camera shake it up V2 pack at 11%.net. There there's like 50 camera shake presets that you can just drag and drop into Premiere Pro, makes really nice looking camera shakes. So with that guys, here's the final result with some of these camera shakes applied. Hope you guys enjoy. If you guys made it to the end of the video, I just wanna say thank you again so much for watching. You can check out more of our tutorials right here and definitely make sure to smash the like button, hit subscribe. Most of you guys who are watching aren't even subscribed to our channel and it actually sucks because we're releasing weekly new tutorials on cool effects using After Effects Premiere Pro, just sharing the sauce with all you guys completely for free. And once again, if you're interested in spicing up your music videos, definitely make sure to check out our preset pack store, 11percent.net, link below in the description. We have overlays, title card templates, artificial camera shakes, and just a bunch more. All these effects are super easy to use just drag and drop all of our overlays are in 4k and all of our presets are custom made for adjustment layers so it's super easy to use and it actually makes your videos look a lot better while also saving yourself some time so if you want to check them out they're all available in the link in the description once again thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video peace